everybody. Welcome to Fender Play Live. I'm Dylan Caligiuri. Eugene is out again this week, so I'm in the driver's seat. Look out, right? Okay, we've got a fun show, though. Uh, we've got some great guests who are going to be showing you uh, all about major and minor ninth chords. And there might be some bonuses in there, too. And these are essential for R&B guitar. Plus, plus, we're going to tell you about two chances, two chances to win a free guitar this week. So let's get right to it. So first off, helping with this topic this week is the fantastic, the wonderful, the absolutely, the magnanimous Juno. Juno. What's oh, up? Juno. What up, what up, what up? Welcome. Wonderful to see you here. And also, also, that's right. It's there's there's more. We have a beloved Fender Play instructor, Mr. John McLennan. John. Hey, ooh, what's ooh, up, ooh, everybody? Ooh, ooh. McLennan. What up? Okay, excellent, excellent. So Juno is an artist, a guitarist, an entrepreneur. She runs an international guitar school called Juno's Guitar Boot Camp, and she's played with uh, artists like Fifth Harmony, Lizzo, Machine Gun Kelly, and there's there's quite a few more on that list. Uh, she's being very modest here. So uh, Juno, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, the first thing our, our viewers are going to want to know, what are you holding? What's in your hands oh right Oh my there? goodness, this beautiful, This I named this guitar The Truth because I can't play nothing but The Truth on this thing. Oh wow. This is yes. a Fender Ultra Lux Strat. It oh. is gorgeous. It has the Floyd Rose pickups, Ooh. which means I can do a lot of stuff yes. with, the, with this thing here. And um, yeah, it's just a gorgeous, gorgeous Humbuckers. Can you give us Excuse me. a Ooh. quick little taste of that? Like, give Humbuckers, us just a single, single. Yes, oh, let me give you yeah. a little, little something, something. Love it. There's more to come. Oh, 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 oh That's where she I got, gets. I got it set up so I can go down and I can come every up. Every time oh, you yeah. use, yes, she gets, uh, a, a angel gets its wings every time yes, she uses that. every time uh, I get excited. John, what is, what is that? You've got something pretty classic looking right there. Yeah, this is uh, not as cool as Juno with the with the whammy bar, but uh, more of a simple design, you know, uh, keeping it keeping it just pretty standard there. This is a Fender Telly, and then I'm just going through uh, a 1967 basement, so all Fender. Wow. Wow. Oh. And uh, just, I love the sound. Classic, classic. That's fantastic. That sounds real good. I like it. Both of you guys sound great. That's and I've got classic. a Ampro 2 here. This is one of the ones from the studio. So you guys are going to see it in Lessons on Fender Play. It's coveted. Coveted by uh, the staff at the studio. So haha, ha, I have it right now. Anyway, so we're gonna get right to it, okay? So let's, uh, if you guys have any t any questions for us out there in viewer land, please don't be shy, drop them in the comments and, and they'll get them back to us. We wanna, we wanna hear from you. So Juno, so we're gonna start right with you on this. We wanna hear some examples, some R&B examples of ninth chords in action. Can you play something for us? Yes, okay, so I'm gonna keep it real simple today. Okay. And I'm just gonna play something and then kind of break it down, okay? Wonderful. So we got. Very nice. Very nice. Little, very little nice. Pepper, salt, and pepper. Yeah, I love how you've got your own question and answer stuff in there. That's really <laughs> cool, you know? Uh, so, can you build out a little bit of what you just did there? Yes. It kinda sh yeah. <clears throat> so, first of all, I want to talk about everyone knows minor seven chords. They're very, mm -hmm. very simple and very common in R&B chords. And I think the reason why people use R uh, minor seven chords is because of the emotion they bring out. They kind of bring mm -hmm. that kind of smooth vibe. And then minor nine chords... I kind of like to think of them like the salt and pepper on the top or the cherry on the top. Oh, okay. So if you think about D minor 7 and E minor 7 and then F major 7, that's a very simple chord progression. I'm in the key of C and that's just 2, 3, 4. Okay, so for the 2 chord, 
the D minor seven. Instead of playing D minor seven, I'm gonna play D minor nine. Uh, and okay. the voicing I'm gonna do is right here. Okay? Can you feel the difference between that? That's kind of more, kind of warm in the middle and then. It's got a vocal characteristic to it, right? Yeah, yeah. it's kind of got, yeah. got this extra little swag sauce on there. Right. So the right. reason why I like it is because you can take very simple progressions like this and really spice it up. So first, I'm just going to take the D minor 7, and instead of playing D minor 7, sometimes I'm going to substitute it with D minor 9, and just watch how that changes this simple okay. progression. So you got I it. love it. So, so far, was just, that was just major 7, so watch this. Okay, it sounds ah. like I did a whole nother chord. Right. I did the same chord, but a different voicing, and then I added that 9. So, minor 9 chords are just minor 7 chords adding a 9. So, 1, 3, 5, 7, if you were to think about the chord formula from the major scale, the first note, the third note, the fifth note, and the seventh note. And then you add the nine. So in the key of C, if I'm on C major, and I'm on a C major seven chord, and I want to add the nine, I'm going to make it C major nine. And so the note you're adding is a D, right? Because the two exactly. is the same thing as the nine up an octave. So Exactly. That's the so, exact thing. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. But keep going. Keep going. And I want to say this. I, I, when I first learned these chords, I didn't understand really how to use them. But the way I like to think of the way to use them is that instead of playing the minor 7, I substitute it for it to add different flavor, to add mm. different sauce. So in the same way, when I go to this F major chord, this F major 7 chord, instead of going to F major 7, oh, oh. Woo yeah. somebody, somebody was just born out east. <laughs> I could feel a baby was just born just now. <laughs> He's a baby making chords. I just want to warn y'all. Somebody, somebody might be born. We might have a new birthday. That's all I'm saying. So, and if you feel that, you know, I studied guys like Jairus Mozi and Eric, Eric Walls and Isaiah Sharkey, and they used to play these really warm chords. And I noticed that they did not a lot of, a lot of times include the high E string. Right. So when you play, you hear a lot of players play that F major seven, and they love to do the pinky tricks. And that's right, beautiful. Right. Yeah. But another kind of trick you can add is, you know, everybody gonna be doing that. Their pinky gonna be falling off. You can just sit and be like, <laughs> and just chill, and just let, right. just like Prince used to do, just let. Just. You ain't, you ain't gotta do all that pinky stuff. Mm -hmm. you yeah, because you don't want arthritis just in the. You want, you know, yeah. You don't want arthritis in the pinky. So just to recap, <clears throat> for D minor seven, I'm I'm substituting sometimes with D minor 9 and I'm gonna slip that in right before I get to the E minor 7 okay. almost like I'm playing two versions of this D minor chord first the D minor 7 then the D minor 9 and I'm sharing oh, yeah. the beat right before I get to the E minor 7 and then watch okay that's that that's that major 9 so you can yeah. feel you can feel the warmth and the shift of like uh oh wait a minute who cooking? What happened? Who's making gumbo in there? You know you walk in your grandma's house, you like somebody cooking. And now I'm hungry. On that's what that, so. that's what major nine and minor nine chord. It feels like somebody cooking something in here. You know, that's just fantastic. Perfect. I love yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, John, so for anybody that's new to guitar, can you show us how you might play a couple of those chords in the first position? So maybe yeah. the minor seventh and then add it, make it a minor ninth or major yeah. seventh, major ninth. Totally. So, you know, adding exactly like what Juno's saying is that flavor, you know what I mean? Having having a, a basic chord progression, that's where this becomes so useful because you may be starting with your C and your, your F and your G, but now you start C major 7, F major 7, you know, and then a lot of that, you know, we hear that a lot is like the embellishments, you know, all that kind of pinky stuff. But right. playing it in a simple way, you know, you could take like a C chord, right? And sure. then just so you could hear the sound, you take off your index finger and you take off your middle finger. So now you got a one finger C chord, right? P pretty easy. But you mm. start hearing the sound of the, the chord, right? So everybody and out there, there's no reason you can't play a ninth chord today. Today yeah. it can happen, right? And we can put you in a ninth chord today. Yeah, right. as you keep going, then then you get into the bar chords and really a lot of the closed position shapes where you start leveling it up. But a simple way is just right there on. That on was C. perfect. 
I've already got a question. We've already got questions. That's how compelling these chords are, right? Amanda Davis says, I noticed uh, I noticed Juno uh, is up strumming, it's, and it's different than normal. So she's saying, I think that, that your up strum has some different characteristics. And I think more specifically, Amanda's asking what strings that you're hitting on your up strum when you're playing, um, especially sure. I think the pinky chords. Yeah. Yeah, so like <clears throat> for the um, minor nine chord, Let's talk about this this D minor nine shape, and this is with the root on the low E string here at the let's see, ooh, tenth fret, and then I got my pinky or my ring finger, sorry, on the twelfth fret. Oh, Whenever good. I play this minor nine shape, I try and accentuate, as they oh. say, accentuate the the G, B, and E strings because it kind of creates this little. Okay, this little thing like so if I hammer down from the 10th fret to the 12th fret mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and I focus with my right with my strum hand, I focus on uh, highlighting the high E string. It's going to it's going to make that hammer on give me almost like cool melody. So check this out. I can go. And I'm only doing that. I'm taking my ring finger hammering down. I'm, I'm starting with the D string and ending on the high E string. But I'm really, when I'm playing around, I'm really focusing on just really the, even the top two strings sometimes. I used to think I had to always strum every string. I was mm -hmm. thirsty for like a couple years. I was like, I'm gonna get these strings. <laughs> and I was like, wait a minute, you don't even need all these babies all the time. Right, right. So yeah. sometimes I just focus on the notes I'm trying to accentuate. And when I go up, the same thing. Oh yeah. The same yeah. thing. And I really try and let each note have its moment uh -huh. Again, if you slow down, I think that's the thing about R and B. It's not about her. It's not the turn up. You can go to the club and not everybody twerking. We gonna have a hot girl summer, all that. This right. is slow down, feel it. So I'm really oh, taking my time good. when I come back to yeah. make sure I hit each string individually. So I'm not doing anything fancy, but really slowing down. And unfortunately, that is pretty fancy in the guitar world. Slowing it, it down. It really is these days. I'll that's tell like you. magic tricks to be able yeah. to slow down. You know, really. F really feel that same thing when I do if I do a major C major nine or let's let's take the the shape the easy shape just playing with my ring finger on the third fret of the A string okay okay we got this right well I can I can look at this shape and I can see the notes that I'm playing and how they're making people feel and I can want to ac accentuate the weirder parts, mm, if that yeah. makes sense. So yeah, as you're playing yeah. the strings, you can feel which strings you hit. And that's what I love when I'm by myself, hit each string individually. Okay. That's kind of a weird spot. So listen, listen to this. I'm gonna create a melody just with this. Okay. Okay, so what am I doing? Nothing. I'm just kind of messing around, but I'm I'm trying to get to know where are the spots in this chord that's making me feel something. Yeah. And it's yeah. not I don't any longer think of chords as just one whole thing. Right. Each one of these notes is like gumbo. They add a different flavor. flavor. Yeah. So the more I get to know these flavors, he showed us the shape. This shape ain't gonna ever change for the next right. million years. It's gonna be there. So as you slow down and get to really know these shapes then you can manipulate them. And when you want to make people feel more weird, you can highlight those strings that feel more weird, even if you don't know what they're called. Sure, sure. You know, oh, that's so that, great. That's my take on it. That's fantastic. So, uh, Amanda, I hope you got all that. Um, a couple of ways to add color, playing your ninth chords, major and minor ninth chords. Uh, and if you're a beginner, there's a way to start right out of the gate with some creative stuff using the ninth. So that's very cool. Uh, so we've got a nomenclature question. A question about nomenclature. Uh, what's the difference between add nine Love this. Yes. and major or minor nine? So this really, is my favorite question. Do you want you want to take that one, Gino? Can I can I take okay, it? Okay, yes, go for it. Okay, because I, I don't I don't want to take all the questions. No, okay. no, 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 no. So no. this is so important. If you think about the C major scale. All right. Right. You have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, or do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do, or C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. It's, it's, it's seven different sounds you're making. And when you think about them in the numbers, you can make what's called chord formulas using those numbers. So if I'm in the key of C and I wanna make a C major uh, shape, a C major triad is one, three, five. Right. What that means is in the key of C, 
I'm gonna take the one, the two, and the five. And that's my uh. C major triad. So that's one, three, five. That's the most simple, basic version of C. Sure. Now, okay. if I wanna make it a little bit fancier, I can make it a C major seven. That's a seventh chord. C major seven, write this down, is one, three, five, seven. So I'm gonna add the seven, which is B. If I'm, if I'm holding an open C major chord, in order to add B, I look at my hand and say, hmm, if I lift up my first finger, just like my man said, bam, that's C major seven. Right, okay? right. Now, very important distinction right here. If I, if I have C major and I add the nine, mm -hmm. I'm adding the note D. I'm going to put my pinky down right here on the third fret of the B string because that note is D. And then all I have to do is add nine. Right. Add the nine, and that's C major plus the nine. Right. A lot of people, a famous, a popular shape where people go from here, C, C, add nine, and then they go up to G. You guys see that shape all the time? Well, it's the same thing. You're just holding it differently. It's just a C major chord with an add nine. Yeah. C major nine is a C major seven chord. Right. Then you add the nine. You have to have that seven, okay? Right. So uh, this is important information. It's, I'm, I'm about to save y'all three years in a six six walks around the block and some tears. And when a degree. You, yeah. And a degree. You just go <laughs> straight to it. <laughs> Sometimes on the guitar, you run out of fingers. Can I just save y'all like 10 years? Sometimes you're going to just run out of fingers. You're going to want to do some stuff, but you ain't going to have no more fingers to do it. The way you get around that, what I've learned, there are certain parts of the chord that don't obtain any important information, so you can leave it out. Hmm. The note I'm referring to is the five, the five note, the fifth Omit. note, which is G. You can take it out. Oh, so yeah. when I'm playing C major nine, I'm playing the notes C, E, <coughs> B, and D. Right. That's what this is, C, E, B, and D. Notice there's no G. That's the five. You left the five That's out. That's the five. I left yep. the five out because if I were to play C major nine or C minor nine, sure. the five would not, it would not change. What right. that means is the five ain't really doing nothing. It's not. You ever have somebody that's just not really doing nothing, but they always in the room? That's Contribute. what the five is doing. Yep. They, don't, they ain't bring a dish. They didn't bring no tacos. Nothing. They didn't bring no sandwiches. Right. They just chilling. So C major nine, this, the reason why this works is we took the five out and that's important because uh, you shouldn't just memorize shapes anymore. You should start to understand what's in these shapes because the question you just asked, that's a brilliant key to being able to create and understanding how to manipulate these chords. So you Absolutely. have a C major triad. That's the most simple basic form. Then we're going to make it a C major seven. Okay, now we're going to go back fantastic. to C major. I'm going to add the nine. That's C add nine. Now I'm gonna play C major nine. Woo -hoo -hoo, I gotta teach y'all that real quick. <laughs> that, that, I felt that in my own spirit, you understand? <laughs> so when you're playing this major nine shape, I have my middle finger on the third fret of the A string, my first finger on the second fret of the D string, my ring finger on the third fret of the B string and my pinky on the fourth fret of the G string. I'm just showing it because it's a little weird shape. Yeah. Now, if you flatten your first finger and bar the D and the G strings, you can do a little hammer on with your pinky. So I'm gonna go just from C major nine to F major nine. That's a simple chord progression from the one to the four. So listen yeah. to that, C major nine. Slide up. My middle finger is now on the eighth fret of the A string. Now watch when I add that trick. You see, I switched it up. Yeah, yeah, totally. And that's what that was the question she asked. What did I do? Well, since I wanted to accentuate that the bottom part, I only played. You know what I'm saying? You accentuate the parts that you're trying to highlight. So That's fantastic, yeah. That, I hope that answers your question that Absolutely. it's basically a triad one three five or a, a add nine is one three five nine. A major seven is one three five seven. 
and a major nine is one, three, five, seven, nine. And if you run out of fingers, throw the five out. Get rid of that five. Omit the five. And yes. if I you should write mention, that down, that's like standard. You, yeah. you, you've done it. You've gone to Fender Play University. I should mention there's <laughs> there's lessons on Fender Play on all of this. So you can check out uh, the family of chords lessons for any key. So you can chords in the key of C. It'll show you basically how to get like from C to F as, as uh, Juno was just talking about. And then uh, there's quite a few lessons on path on how this works as well. So if you're if you're confused or, or if this is going over your head, let it sink in. Let osmosis take place. I promise it'll make sense over time. So uh, thank you so much. G Juno, that's fantastic. So we, we want to talk a little bit about um, basically digging into the context within R&B and kind of also, you know, the general genre of major and minor ninth chords where they appear prominently in mm -hmm. R&B music. And I'm wondering if you can give us a playing example of just another example of how they would really kind of fill in an R&B groove or an R&B chord progression. Yeah. So I remember like early 90s or I don't know if it was mm -hmm. early 90s, but like Tupac and Usher and they used to have all these really cool guitar, um, guitar parts in, in their songs. And I mean, from Mary J. Blige to, uh, you know, India Ari, they're so... R&B soul is such a broad genre. And so I'm just gonna play a, another, again, very simple chord progression, but show you how the making the minor nines and the mm. pinky tricks really enhance it. So I'm just playing A minor, mm -hmm. D minor, and then E minor. E minor A seven. minor, D minor, and so, E minor. A minor, D minor, E minor, okay? So All check right. this out. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm yeah. taking each chord and I'm kind of creating like melodies right. with the minor seven chord. So if I just had A minor A minor seven, I would be playing the fifth fret, barring the fifth fret, and then of course I got my ring finger and my pinky on the seventh of the A and D. But I'm gonna free up my pinky and kind of come down and just grab that there. And what's cool is when I do that, I can also put my finger down my pinky down and I have yeah. a whole nother trick so I got open just a minor seven a minor nine and then you put your pinky down you go. a minor seven again yeah yeah I, I want you to continue with this we have a quick question from Ed Duda on YouTube uh, he's asking if pickups are important with R&B is there yes. a particular pickup I like to stay up in the upper pickups I do not like going down to the bridge at all it gets really like tingy and tangy I tingy, think I'm trying to make it as smooth as possible. Literally mm. like a baby is, is right there sleeping. You don't want to wake the baby up. Like, uh -huh. you know, really smooth, warm. I keep my tone, honestly, sometimes even down to like one. Like wow. very, very warm. And I like So you to guys heard that. The the minor the major minor ninth chords, they both make the baby and keep it asleep yes, during the entire This the is baby fantastic. Asleep. I mean, and really, hold the it's bottle. Full, it's crazy. It's a... <laughs> the, Flo the Floyd Rose is what holds the bottle. That's oh, what I forgot okay. to <laughs> So uh, we have one more question. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, actually, you know what? Carry on, because one of the things you were doing when you were playing that I think the audience would, would like to hear it, or be able to ascertain or understand. You were doing some of the rhythmic sort of. We have lessons on Fender Play called stopping sound with your uh, yes. strum hand and also yes. accented picking. And can you talk a little bit about how you're using that to stylize? Yes. So I'm kind of creating this rhythm, and I'm, I have this loop pedal here. So one second, mm -hmm. I'm gonna. I'm just gonna go. Uh oh. Can y'all hear me? I can hear you. Okay, so the idea is, even if you don't hear the, the rhythm, you're playing in a way that you can feel that rhythm. Right. So when I hammer down, I'm going down right. and then up. So I'm, I'm hammering down and then I'm strumming again up. But when I strum up, I say slap it like it stole something. Now, I don't encourage mm -hmm. nobody to slap nobody. Don't tell nobody I told you to slap nobody. Well, but, but you, know, you kind of yeah. got to slap real quick. It's like a, I'm using this part of my hand, kind of like the palm here, 
to kind of, and it's not really like palm muting because you're not doing that the whole time, but you're doing that to manipulate the rhythm. So if sure. every time, every time I want to go like on the one, two, three, four, one, two, I'm using my strum hand. So I'll go two, three, four, two, three, two. Okay. So hammer down, pull up, stop. That's fantastic. Hammer down, pull the, pull it off, and then you stop it. So, okay. When you go to this E minor seven chord, if you take your pinky and just put it right down, right on the tenth fret of the B string, your your pinky. Okay. So kind of practice that going from A minor nine. You're gonna go. And that stopping just, the sound is what's really important there. That's fantastic. You want it clean. Just stop yeah, it, no, that's fantastic. Know. Yeah, getting the decay of it, the cutoff. Our producer has a request. Uh, uh, I he wants to hear a tune that we that's on the site. It's called uh, "What Is Hit" by um, by uh, Tower Power, and I actually prepped it. Hit it, boys. Let's do it. Here we go. Hit it. I'll show you where the ninth chords are at. John, can you mention a few of the songs that use uh, dominant ninth chords that are on the site? Because we didn't talk about them in some episode, but they're definitely a big part of guitar sound, right? Oh, I'm sorry about that. John, can you talk about a few of the songs that are on the site that use dominant ninth chords? Yeah, there's a great full song lesson for Sissy Strut, the uh, meters tune, you know. And the whole, there's an organ solo in there where the guitar player is just... He's just playing a C9 chord and it's face is mandatory. Yeah, yeah, it's it's <laughs> great to be able to just kind of lock into that groove and just play on one chord. And that's one thing that's amazing about these chords once you start learning them. Like Juno was saying, you know, you can go slow or you could just stay on one chord and vamp mm -hmm. for a while sure. and the harmony works for you. Like when you play a lush chord like Nobody cares, uh, like, you know, oh, I like, you, you know, like, I wish they, I wish they were busier, you know, Nobody right. really, it, you know, it's just like you can let, let the chords work for they you. They stop and notice, like Juno was talking about. Yeah. Exactly. And, Juno, I think we could spend um, a long time with you on this. And I think the viewers yeah. as well, uh, absolutely find you to be a, a, a total authority on this subject. And it's been fantastic. Can you tell me of some famous songs that use these chords that our viewers can point to? Yes. Um, one of my favorite really simple peaches by Justin Bieber that just came huh? out. Very simple. Okay, I gave up. I ain't gonna sing because I ain't the beeps, but you know what you I'm sure? saying. No. <laughs> okay, do you see how every time I play that ma that major nine, you can feel it. I call yeah. them atmosphere changers because they change the atmosphere. Literally, you can feel it. So right. you, got, you got songs like that. Um, the, the song I was playing earlier was I Need a Girl by Puff Daddy and Usher. I know also James Brown's got some cool songs with some ninth chords. Quite a few. Uh, oh, yeah. You know, what is it? Get on up. You know, Get on it's up. just a classic kind of feel. But I love that you said even just stand on one chord like we talked about. If you sit, if you're starting with this concept and you start with this C major and you just start to just lift up different fingers and just just try it out. Even if you can't remember what it's called, just start to memorize. How does it feel when I lift up my first finger? Mm. Well, that's interesting. More emotion just entered the room. 
so if I'm writing a song and I'm vamping on the chord C and I and I want some, to do something interesting but I don't want to leave C that's an option I can lift up my finger and I'm still on C but I added a new experience to C sure yeah no you can you know what uh, we're going to actually have you assign some homework and you're, I, yes. I'd love for that to maybe be the beginner homework or whatever you think yes. is best. But can you give us any final thoughts on this subject before you assign that homework? I think the most important thing is that you understand where these chords come from. I hmm. promise you, I spent like two years trying to find every new YouTube video and I was going to memorize it front to back. I was hmm. going to find the little dude in Jamaica that no one saw his videos but me and steal all his tricks and, and hmm. all of that. I done been through all of it. And after all of that, I came to the point that I realized the more I understood the language of music, I could express myself more freely. So if you went to another country, you wouldn't memorize words. You would understand the alphabet. Well, our alphabet is the chromatic scale. And then we have chord formulas, we have scales, like there is a system to all of this. So don't just, some of these shapes feel weird, but the more you understand what each of your fingers are playing, it's not just a random shape you're memorizing, but this is the one, the three, you know what I'm saying? You know yeah. exactly each note you're playing and it makes it more meaningful to you because guess what? It's never going to change. When you yeah. go to F major seven, I mean F major nine, the, the one and the three are in the same place they were when your hands were Those relationships, at. yeah. So that's start perfect. to pay attention to those relationships. I think that's more powerful than memorizing a bunch of information you don't understand. Oh, memorizing yeah. a little bit of information that you fully understand and seeing what you can get out of that. That's great. That's fantastic. I love it. To become an expert on what you know, not just a collector of information. Yeah. I love that. All right. So uh, homework. What do you want homework. the beginners to do? I think the first thing for beginners is to just see if you can hear the difference between when you add the seven, the major seven, take it away, put your pinky down, really mm -hmm. look at this first open position and see how many different variations you can do of C and understand the, that formula right in that open position. That would be a, a beginner place to start. Okay, that's great. If and I how was about, in, so, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry, if I was an intermediate player, I would try and find as many voicings as I can of of the the C major nine like start with one chord C major nine if sure. you know the formula which is C E G B and D how many different places can you combine those chords together right. you know right. and that's what I would do that's okay that's just adding color that's adding color that's my grandma and she the only person that called me so y'all give me a break I only no, got no, one no friend at all. my grandma and this is her okay it, how about for advanced <laughs> Um, for advance, I would say work on different inversions. Ah. Meaning you have C, E, G, B, D. But mm -hmm. what happens if you put the D in the bass? Ooh. What happens if you, like if you really advance and you're just all over the neck with these, I would literally start seeing what happens when you switch up the order. Even if you leave the, the original root note, what happens if you put the nine right after that? as opposed uh -huh. to the three being right after that. Like switch up the, the way you play it and challenge yourself to not memorize shapes you've learned, but create, your, create new shapes right. based on understanding the formula. And it's gonna be so rewarding because you're gonna feel like you got your own chords that, that don't nobody know, but you and that one dude on YouTube. <laughs> I love it. That's perfect. Well, you know, thank you so much. That's fantastic. That is, that is a wonderful major and minor ninth chord primer as well as some additives in there as well. So uh, now it's time for the Fender Play segment. This is, uh, we've got two giveaways today, so listen up close. Uh, John, can you tell us about the very first one? This is the first of two, so hang in there. Yeah, so there's a special giveaway this week for Fender Play members, and we just released some songs by Corey Wong, three songs, Ooh. and uh, you can go on there, and all you gotta do is watch the lessons, and you're gonna be entered automatically to win a Corey Wong signature Strat, and this guitar is amazing, and we're gonna be announcing the winner right here next week on the show, with the one and only Corey Wong. So make sure to take the lesson oh. and then come back and tune in next week. That's fantastic. So if you're watching, what you could do is you could check out the new Corey Wong lessons that are on Fender Play, get your questions together, come back, ask them in the group, and then literally they will be answered by none other than Mr. Wong himself. So that sounds Incredible. like a great deal. That's a great deal. Okay, so I've got the second announcements. This, that was the first one. The second one is, uh, 
basically we give something away every week on this show always right we always give something away and all you've got to do is be a Fender Play member and use the site for a minimum of 21 minutes a week or three seven minute streak sessions you're automatically entered to win you get to pick from guitars amps basses all kinds of stuff we'll reach out to you okay so I'd really love to call your name at the end of the show do you guys want to hear who won this week Absolutely, they do. I'll tell you, they do. And we're gonna give them a little. We're gonna give them a little kind of a major ninth. Add nine one. Conjuring up the name. Huh, huh. It's Brett F. Brett F. Brett. Woo. Yeah, Brett. Brett. I knew it was gonna be Brett. I knew it was Brett. Um. Yeah. Congratulations, Brett. Uh, make sure you post whatever you win. We'd love to see it in the community. We've got a ton of new stuff on the site, you guys. There's always new stuff on Fender Play. And like we were just talking about, we're very excited about the new Corey Wong material. So Wolfpack, some of you may have heard of Wolfpack out there. Uh, if you haven't, you got to check him out. It's funky, funky. It's very funky. Uh, but uh, there's there's actually uh, that preset right there. If you own a Fender Mustang, is out there. As far as the Cosmic Sands, or excuse me, Comic Sands song that's on. Uh, we've got Dean Town. We've got uh, quite a few different ones that are out there from Corey Wong, as well as the full song Boulevard of Broken Dreams by uh, Green Day. So check out the new songs. Uh, that's it. I w we're going to wrap it up. I want to give a huge thank you to Juno. A huge thank you. Juno, you did a thank great you. job. Thank you so yeah. much for putting up with my terrible jokes. I appreciate it. No, 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 no. The jokes Do are great. Do what you can. Do what you can. That's right. And um, is there anything that you'd like to tell us about here? Anything yes, like I'm just so respect. excited. I've been building Juno's Guitar Boot Camp, which is just a guitar community of students. We learn, we yeah. go through theory, but we make it simple. Mm. And I do a scholarship program every year. Wow. So I do R&B master classes all year. And once a year, I do a scholarship program called the Building Black Leader Scholarship. Very and I'm cool. just trying to spread the resources to the communities that don't always necessarily have access so right. that we can get more funky music out into the world and Absolutely. carry that on to the next generation. Because when I'm in, when I'm 90 years old, y'all better be sounding good and in tune yeah. when I'm in that right. nursing home. Y'all can't I, be, I want some Stevie Wonder. You know what I'm saying? So that's what I'm doing. I'm doing my part to, to share that. So please check me out. Juno's Guitar Boot Camp is the name of it. You can check me out at Juno underscore the artist. That's J-U-N-O. And just check me out. Keep, keep staying in the loop. I'm dropping a music video next week. You heard it first. Wow. No one knows that. Um, so I got a bunch of cool stuff going on. I'm really just trying to spread good music and good vibes like Motown. That's great. You know what I'm saying? Well, you, you spread it well because uh, Barry Kane, a, a viewer on YouTube, says have her come back for a two-hour show. What? So, I know. I don't know. Barry. Tell him to hit, hit me up. I'm going to take him to lunch for that. I owe, <laughs> yeah. I owe you for that. <laughs> so, everybody out there, thank you so much for watching. Make sure you keep safe, keep practicing, and we'll see you next week at the same time, same place. Let's all go out on a G major nine. You guys ready for this? One, two, three. Yeah.